Bonnie, you just did a recent report on uh, a sh called a shifting balance, Chinese assessments of U.S. power. What did you find in that report that the Chinese are, how did the Chinese view us? We often in this country uh, have an ongoing dialogue about what we think of the Chinese, but you turned it, on its, turned it around a little bit and said, you know, what did the Chinese think of us? This has been a very important variable in the past in shaping Chinese policy toward the United States and frankly toward the rest of the world. When the Chinese are certain that the United States is in a very strong position, uh, then they are more cautious in their foreign policy. They avoid confronting uh, the United States and they try to work within the widely accepted uh, international norms uh, and regulations. So the big question that I examine in this paper is Chinese debates over whether or not the United States is a declining power. And I find that this is a very intensely debated topic in China. The leadership is less willing to draw the conclusion that the United States is on the decline than some scholars in China are. And, but of course, the recent uh, debt crisis in the United States, I think, has probably made the Chinese um, even more uh, optimistic about their ability to narrow the gap between the United States and China in the future. And I think that they will see opportunities that potentially they can take advantage of. Is their overall goal to overtake the United States as far as being the U.S. being the only superpower? Do they hope to achieve superpower status and at the same time see the U.S. decline and weaken? I don't think that the Chinese have the ambition to be a global superpower in their own region. I think they would like to be the preeminent power. Um, and I think that they can live with U.S. military presence and economic presence for some time to come, uh, though they do want to shape that presence and be willing to prevent the United States from intervening militarily if there is a crisis involving, for example, uh, Taiwan. Uh, they would like to prevent the United States from being as active as we are in the South China Sea. But I don't see them as seeking to supplant the United States uh, as the sole superpower. And I think that the Chinese are very ambivalent about U.S. decline because a decline in the U.S. economy is not good for China and not good for the Chinese people. After all, uh, we are the source of the market to buy so many of their exports. But having said that, um, having a, a power balance in the world is really in China's interests, where the United States cannot make uh, decisions without other countries' support. Uh, the Chinese do not want the United States or other countries circumventing the United Nations, for example. So I think that they watch very closely uh, U.S. power, uh, the exercise of U.S. power, how we work with other countries around the world, and they worry about our intentions toward China, how we will uh, deal with China's rise. Will we welcome its emergence? Will we seek to work with China as a, as a partner? Or uh, will we seek to slow uh, China's rise? There is this narrative in China that the United States wants to encircle China militarily and that we want to prevent its unification with Taiwan and we would like to slow its reemergence as a great power. Um, I think that this is actually untrue um, and uh, our president often states that he welcomes the rise of a uh, stable and prosperous and strong China, but the Chinese tend not to believe it. Well, along those lines, this week Vice President Biden is visiting China. What are the goals of that visit? Well, I think the vice president's visit to China is very important because we need to build a better rapport with the next leadership in China. Uh, the current president and secretary general of the Communist Party in China, Hu Jintao, um, will be stepping down from his party position in the fall of 2012 and then from his position as president in the spring of uh, 2013. And the leadership transition is already underway. And the successor, uh, will be Xi Jinping, and this is the uh, counterpart, of course, of uh, Vice President Biden. Uh, I think that this visit uh, of the Vice President uh, comes at a time where there are many worries in China as well as around the world, and I think also in the United States, about uh, 
the uh, U.S. debt and how we are going to cope with our fiscal problems. And I think that that will probably be on China's minds and the Vice President, um, having worked so closely in this process in Congress, uh, will be able to, uh, to talk with the Chinese, address some of their concerns, and to talk about how we can work together uh, to solve some of these really pressing global um, economic issues and problems in our bilateral economic relationship. Do the Chinese see um, our ramped up diplomatic efforts uh, with them as a sign of U.S. weakness, or do they see it as a sign of U.S. realism, pragmatism? How do they view it? I think that many people in China worry about the intentions behind the ramped up U.S. Uh, efforts in, in the Asia Pacific. Uh, I think that there are concerns about what Secretary Clinton has talked about as our return to Asia. They do see, as I mentioned, that the United States is working with some of their very close neighbors. Um, from their perspective, they see it as the U.S. seeking to divide uh, China from neighboring countries, uh, to drive a wedge between China and some of its neighbors, uh, and to um, uh, ensure that uh, China doesn't uh, intimidate its, its neighbors, and particularly on issues like the South China Sea, which have been so divisive. Uh, but the Chinese should not, I believe, lose sight of the fact that the Obama administration is seeking to not only work with China bilaterally, but to include China in everything that it is doing in the Asia-Pacific region. And the Chinese should see that as presenting opportunities, not just challenges. Bonnie Glazer, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.